Good. Got it, Kid. Got it. Okay, very good. The reason we're not admitting the mayor yet is we're voting whether our association would like to contribute $100 in memory of her husband, late husband, to the uh, children that uh, Ms. Cheryl is helping the, um, what do you call that? Youth assistance. Youth assistance, yes. We'd like to contribute $100. I make the proposal to draw $100 into Cheryl's uh, youth assistance. For in the memory of Keith uh, McClellan. Do I hear a second? Second. Do I hear any objections? No. No problems? All right, so it shall be. Let's All let good. the mayor in. Thank give you so news. much. That will be put to great use. I appreciate Excellent. it. Excellent. We'll let the mayor in, give her the good news. And let's, yeah, I was gonna say, let's tell her. I'll tell her I'll, let her, I'll let her come in right now. I said, please be patient. Is she on your holding pattern, uh, Don? Not yet. Okay, I'll tell her right now, log in. Okay. Now, if anybody else here has a certain cause or idea that we can be of assistance to, you know, we're here. We like to be supporting each other. Um, God forbid one of us needs help or something or wants to be a, a remembered or something, you know. Remember to uh, mute yourselves if you're not speaking at the meeting today. Yes, and when you, before and you do have a, a way of chatting and the sidebar there and yeah. also if you wish to speak that's fine but please uh, let us know first before we see you coming in so we can acknowledge you and uh, accept it okay is uh everybody on board here is marianne marion marion is she on board yet not yet not yet okay let me wake her up. Hold on. <laughs> she might be in the middle of something because you told her five after. It's not quite and five did, after yet. Did. I don't. I don't know how to raise my hand. There's a. If you go down to the bottom of your screen, there's. Oh, um, there it is. I see it. Actions to raise your hand. Yep. And then lower your hand, or else I'll lower it for you once you're talking or done talking. See, let's let's get rolling. Let's not wait on the mayor. She joins us when she joins us. All right, let's begin. But he's, uh, I think he's probably talking to her. Peter, are you, are you running the meet? I don't know who's, is it Zig or you running the meeting? You're on mute. Zig is chairing the meeting. Okay. <laughs> oh, what is? He's talking to the mayor. Oh, okay. I think uh, you take over for a while. I've got I've got I've got Marion on the line. I want to we'll talk her into getting on Zoom. She's having trouble. So you, Don, Don and Sam or, or Peter, take it for a while. Take the meeting for a while. Peter, you want to give us a treasury report? No, yeah, we uh, before our contribution, we have uh, six hundred and thirty two dollars and seventy five cents. So now we have $532.75. Yes. Shall we dive in with Officer Benson? We don't have. So Officer Benson, uh, you there? <laughs> yeah, well, there you are. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, I'm here. So, hey, good evening. How you all doing? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Shall we? Yep. Yep. Shall we start with our questions, or would you like to preface uh, some 
Thanks. No, you know what? Actually, I just wanted to say Happy New Year to you all. I haven't seen you all um, in a while. Uh, I see, Sam, you got a new look right there for a minute. I had to take a look and see who you were. I see you got a beard. <laughs> on, um, a little um, winter fur. Yeah, a little winter fur. And uh, hey, I'm glad for you all to have me here today. I know I, we haven't seen each other, a lot of you all, probably since the summer. But um, that's what I wanted to, I had to say. We can start with the questions, actually. Um, start get... video. Oh. Hallelujah. <laughs> there she is. Welcome. So the, the first question, crime report for the city. What's going on? What are the crime trends? Are so, they up or down? So you know what? Um, just to let you know, I do I do, do the stats for the year. Um, and our stats are pretty much holding the same over the year from last year to this year. Um, overall, um, we did get uh, more calls volume run over the over the year from last year but i did pull our stats like we used to do i did pull our stats for the month of january um and what we had what we had come up this year uh this time we did i know everyone see it on the news we did have a little trend in motor thefts um we had four for this particular month um a lot of times uh, mm -hmm. that's kind of that's kind of high but like you all say have seen on social media with the kids and the Hyundai's. Um, it was on TikTok and it was going around the car, the Kia Boys. And what they did on TikTok, it shows you, they showed you how to steal a car, especially the Kia or the Hyundai. So that's what a lot of times what you're seeing that's being stolen now is the Kia and the Hyundai. It's almost like um, years ago when it used to be the Neon in the early 2000s, but it is the Kia. Um, we, it's an uprise on the Kia of getting stolen because they showed you how to steal it. Um, you would think the newer ones, push button have, they do have a chip, but the older models, um, you can steal them in a matter of minutes. So it is a trend. Um, it's not just Oak Park. It's um, it's nationwide with the Kia and the Hyundai's uh, being stolen. Mm -hmm. We did have four um, stolen within the area of uh, what we call your area is 5-1 that goes from Coolidge all the way, it, it starts at Coolidge, it goes to nine miles, over to 10 miles, and it goes over to Sherman. So we did have four cars stolen in the area. Hmm. Um, we had uh, four larcenies from automobiles and pretty much were larcenies from automobile. Things were taken from the automobile or things were taken out of the automobile. Uh, we did have four larcenies. We had um, one b &E of a business, and we had two B and E of, of a residence that's in the area. I did check the map. It wasn't real close to you all. There were it was two out of around Coolidge area that was B and E. And we had one one larceny um, during that month and uh, 21 B and E alarms. So that's what we did have um, in that area for the month of January. Any questions uh, regarding um, any of the stats? Well, I have a question, but it's it's regarding. Oh, if a person has a car that's newer with a fab key, is that harder to break into, or what do you think, or do you know? You're you're saying with the, like the computer computer control key? Yeah, like I have a I keep the key in my pocket. It's a, a some kind of a it, it it sends out a signal to the car. Are those cars as easy to to break into as the other no, cars? They're, they're, they're a little harder with the, with the, with the the newer cars, especially the push button key cars the, with the push button. A lot of them you can't start them, so that's why you saw the trend um, in the last two years that they were pushing cars away. And um, what it is is what what you see a lot of what what's going on here is each car has a when you want to tow the car and put it on a flatbed. A lot of times in a console, if you put a console up, it has a latch that you can pull. And when you pull that latch, you put the car in neutral. That's why I'm pretty sure you saw in the news where they were pushing cars away. That's how they was pushing cars away because um, they couldn't start the cars. The cars I'm referring to is the older model Kias. Um, a lot of those, they're just key started. So they're, no, they're not computer controlled. So you're able to uh, just break, like years ago, take a screwdriver and uh, break the ignition and uh, use a pair of pliers to start it. I always recommend people, um, like a lot of these larcenies from auto where they attempted to steal the car, they couldn't because they either put a club or like I say, an aftermarket alarm. 
when you have a factory model alarm, a lot of times, if you don't open up the door, the alarm don't sound. Um, and and through the sunroof, um, they go. They will go through the sunroof or they break a window and climb in. They will climb into the car. So I recommend, like years ago, um, on on one of my particular cars, I got an aftermarket alarm. So if you shake the car, if the window is break, if someone break the window, the alarm will be sounded. But I'll let you know with the with the factory alarms, if you do not open up a door, they don't sound. So that's what you find in a lot of people. They'll break your window and they'll climb in through your car. And that's how they're, they're able to get into your car and start it. Hmm. So, and, and you know, um, what I tell people is put a club on there. You want to do some kind of deterrent to slow them down. Um, because if not, I mean, you got to think about a lot of these Chrysler products. They have an iPad that's controlled where they can get inside a Chrysler product, a G project, and plug it up, and they're gone in 60 seconds. Um, and they're becoming a lot smarter than a lot of these engineers out here. <laughs> Any other questions regarding um, um, cars or larceny? Uh, no. I guess the other question is uh, the speeding problems. Uh, are are we seeing a better handle on that? Are we sending out decoys or cars to trap people that are going too quick or anything like that more often or less often? So, so we are putting decoys out. Uh, we're not putting the traffic trailers out just because of the weather. Um, our tra our traffic trailers are uh, solar powered. And just with like, say for example, we try to keep them out overnight, 24 hours before we bring them in, or we keep it out for a week, especially the new trailer, we will keep it out over over a week in the area. Um, and just do with the snow, uh, snow plows and everything, we don't want it to get damaged, but we are putting decoys out. We are right, we are writing tickets. Um, I can tell you um, last month, our tickets were, were up for our speeders, but let me explain something that was going on what a lot of people might not even know what's going on. Um, we, the laws were passed. We can't arrest people, but a lot of times what's happening now, we're writing tickets for driving while license suspended. We can bring you into the station and write you a ticket, but we have to release you immediately after that. Um, it's no cash bonds for like low level misdemeanors. So we are writing tickets with touring cars. And like I always explain with people. If I get a ticket, I'm going to pay my ticket or go to court on my ticket. What you see, what you see a lot of times on the news, you see a person was arrested with 32 suspensions. What that means is that there, a person had 32 outstanding tickets. So what you get a lot of times, we go out and arrest a person, bring them in, um, set a bond, and they don't show up for court. So now that's 33, that's 33 suspensions. But well, we are arresting people, um, bringing people in, but we are releasing them on a personal bond or we give them pretty much what we give them is a court date. Um, we are touring cars. If if you if we stop you, you don't have insurance on your car or your license suspended, we are touring cars or we'll write you a citation on the, on the side of the road and release you that way. But where it used to be a cash bond, where it used to be a $250 bond, it's not a $250 bond now. We will we send you a court day. So what you're getting is you're getting a lot of more people just getting um just getting tickets, but they're not paying the tickets. <clears throat> uh, we'll suspend your license and and people are continuing to drive in on it, but we are um enforcing traffic laws. That haven't stopped us from enforcing traffic laws because of the law, because we could normally write you a ticket and let you go on the road. Um uh, but we are enforcing that as right. speeding. Now, another real quick question. Uh, these days, everybody, a lot of people have these little cameras in their doors. So, Diggy. yep, go ahead. One, one quick one here. Sorry. Uh, if you have a quick, if you have a, if you capture, let's say, a tailgater or a quick speeder, would you be able to report that to your office and you would just maybe just give them a call and say, look, you know, we've caught you, but we can't give you a ticket. Is that something possible or not? So, so if you do get a license plate for us and then you see some like a rural rage, we will investigate it. Uh, we can run that plate to find out where you, where you live at. And we do go out and investigate it. Um, I'm over the crossing guard. So when they get um, tickets for like speeders or they get someone disobeying, they will turn it over to me. Uh, we will run the plate, especially if there's an area, we will go buy homes. I personally have went by homes that if I got a um, a uh, license plate, I do 
go by the house and advise you of what was going on. So we will do that. Okay, very and, good. Thank you. And just uh, let you know if you see, and we get them all the time. If you see somebody driving reckless, if you get someone uh, tailgating, just give us a call. We get calls all the time for people doing that. And we will go in the area. We have made traffic stops to try to find out what's going on. So we do do that. But the biggest thing, and I want reiterate to reiterate in this meeting is we're out there, but we need people to call. We need you to make contact with our, our dispatch so we can go out there and, and stop the person. Now, if you see a person, you see a, uh, someone speeding and then you, uh, you don't say anything or reckless driving, a lot of sometimes we don't even know about it. So yeah. I encourage people to give us a call. People do it all the time if they think someone is um, drinking and driving. We get calls all the time. Somebody is slumped over a wheel. Someone is weaving in and out of traffic. So we do go and try to catch up with that person. Yes, sir. Thank you, Officer Benson. We also have Miss Kimberly Maroon on board from our Public uh, Development Relations Committee. Welcome to you, young lady. Yeah. What's on your mind? What's going on? Tell us what's going. What's what? What should we be happy about? Now, there's lots to be happy about. No part, but thank you all for having me tonight. Nice to see everybody's faces here. Um, as you know, near your neighborhood, we have the new nine mile um, apartment project that's going up right now. They should be completed in the spring. Uh, lots of interest already in people to rent the um, units. It is our very first transit oriented development. Pretty much what that means is that they located in that particular location because there is a bus transit stop. And as some of you may know, a lot of people nowadays are not purchasing cars, uh, don't have an interest in driving and wanna use the public facilities to get around town. So um, that is why they chose that location. And they also chose it because of all the improvements we did on Nine Mile, particularly the bike lanes, the linear park, the pocket parks, um, everything that we've done on Nine Mile was really the driving force for them to invest in that area. Very nice. And uh, now that pizza place I noticed is closed. Yeah, Primo's Pizza. Um, the owners of that uh, tried to make a run of it. The problem that they've experienced is that they cannot find any employees. And the employees that they did find, um, let's just say they weren't making good choices and were closing whenever they felt like it uh, and weren't doing their particular tasks when they were on staff. Um, and that is a problem we're seeing in every business, no matter if it's a retail, restaurant, industrial, people cannot find employees. So that is a big issue that we're having today. And that is essentially what has driven them um, to close. However, we do have somebody interested in it. So hopefully we'll have it reopened to something new. Uh, I mean, I noticed there was something that Detroit's doing. They're actually uh, incentivizing people to work and training them into cashier, whatever, technical, giving them 20 bucks an hour or whatever, just to get them going. I don't know that's beyond our scope, but maybe uh, we could handle something like that. So we have an Oak Park, Michigan works agency that they do deal with all of those types of things, training. Um, they can provide also um, assistance in paying for employees, especially if they are veterans. So they have a lot of resources that they do provide to all of our businesses in Oak Park. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, we will thank you for your information right now. We'll put both of you executives and the mayor on hold right now. And where is the mayor? Where is, we want to see if there you are. Well, we have a good surprise for you. Oh boy. Who wants to announce it? Doc, we've, Sam, or Peter. we've made a donation uh, on in memory of your oh. late husband to Oak Park Youth Assistance, uh, and we did that at the top of this meeting. Uh, uh, That's why we couldn't let you in. Ha <laughs> ha! Thank you so much. That is so wonderful. Investing in our kids is the best investment, and um, uh, Keith is up there smiling and thanking you too. So. Thanks very much. And let's go to Sam for a minute because he's got a load of uh, questions on his sheet here. Go ahead, I, Sam. I think there was a question first. Um, okay. Don and Justine have been waiting. They had their hand oh, up. Okay. So, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I didn't ahead. see that. 
Yes, oh, all right, Ziggy. The question okay. we had is, uh, we noticed between December, I know we talk about crimes in January, but we noticed December and December and Jeremy, on not, especially nine, nine miles, we're seeing a lot of broken business windows, like uh, uh, Little Caesars, the bus stop, they smashed up the bus stop, uh, the glass there. The, was on the, Nine Mile and Scotia. Mile, we did yeah. call DPW on that one. Yes, we did. And plus the... Uh, um, the Speedy Greasy. Yep. Yeah. Plus on right across mile. the street from us, the doctor's office, which we did see somebody come, come out of the apartment building there, but we could not see what they looked like or nothing. Right. We don't go over there at that night because I just got finished because I walk up and down the street around 11 o'clock at night. I walk and I saw somebody there, but I couldn't see them. So so just to let you know, um, I did do some research. I did talk to the sergeant, uh, the detective bureau, and also my brother, who's the lieutenant of the uh, de detective bureau. And what, what we found out is there was a rash of uh, windows being broken out. And the problem that we were having, they wouldn't be in ease. Um, so a lot of times, uh, only one, I think Dr. Jordan office had a, a um, surveillance camera, which wasn't very clear. So we did see someone with a hoodie on, um, um, dressed in black. Um, so we didn't have a lot to go on. But what I can say, because it's an ongoing investigation, um, down at, um, used to be the Goodyear Hansons, um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a guy that owns that building now. He did uh, make contact with me. And he had some guys there cleaning up, um, you know, cleaning out the building. And when they arrived, arrived at the, well, I'm sorry, when they arrived at the building, they did notice a young guy, uh, but they didn't call us. They just stopped him. But what the, the description they gave us was uh, a light skinned male or a light complexion guy, either with bumps on his face or freckles. And they said it looked like he was, when they made a conversation with him, he was maybe artistic. Um, so that's all we have to go on right now. So what I, I can, see. what I can tell you what's going on, we have extra patrol in the area. Um, guys on the midnights are sitting down in that area and see, can we, um, at least, uh, catch up with the person. And, uh, like I told the guy, uh, Hanson, if you, if they run across a person that's actually trying to, um, break into the building or break it, some, give us a call. They didn't call us to maybe a week later. So just to let you know, if you see someone looking strange or someone out of Oh, place. yeah, like us, we'll call. We will call because yeah. it, it already happened oh. to us area or already. Yeah, we called when we saw the speedy greasy when the, like, I think it's Hanson's you said, when we saw yeah. the windows uh, busted out, we called in the cop. Then there in like two minutes, three yeah, minutes. Yeah, like a couple of days ago, they must have broken in again because the door was open. So, so we saw the front door open, so we called again on that. So what's going on? I know the other buildings, uh, Dr. Jordan, some of the other buildings, there was no access gain. There wasn't anything stolen. So I don't know if this guy is just going around vandalizing, yeah. breaking windows. That's what out, I was thinking, yes. Going around breaking windows. But just to let you know, uh, we do have people um, on our cars. We have uh, people that sitting down there because we are aware of it now. But the big thing was we didn't have any video. We didn't have anything to go on. Uh, you you like may be right about the vandalism because you know how you got the curb part in, uh, in front of the building where they park up to the curb? We cool. notice all the way down mile, nine mile, they're taking them right up and blocking the sidewalk with them. The flower pots, they're throwing everything out of the flower pot all, all, sorry, all over nine mile. Right. We, we noticed that. So, and, and, it, and it wasn't like that. This has uh, been going on for about maybe six, seven weeks now. Yeah. So, so the big thing is you got to think about it in the middle of the night or 11 and 12, nine mile, a lot of times become very quiet. It yes, it does. Too yes, much, it does. too much traffic down there. So, and our, and my suggestion is, and we, we will, we have put it out. If you see anything, you see anything strange, you got to give us a call. We will investigate it. Like I say, when the window was broken out. So you got to think about if you didn't call, if it went through an alarm cycle, most time we got to let the alarm go through. You got to call a dispatch and call. Right, us. I understand. So a lot of times, it might be five to seven minutes, but like we did respond within two minutes. So if you see anything. No, your respond time. times are very great. Yeah. Very great. It may, I was just wondering, maybe like, I know I see in the daytime patrolling up and down nine mile, but 
lot of times after midnight, uh, you really don't see too much officer patrolling. Like we're directly, we're directly on Nine Mile, you know, by the trailhead. So, correct. Um, and then I remember, and I don't know, there there used to be an officer that that did um, that he used to park at at uh, the office, the William Dr. Jordan's office. Okay. And I had and I reached out to him one day and I told him, you know, because we had moved and I saw him all the time, like almost every night there. And I said, you know, it's really great that you, you know, that you're here and that you're keeping an eye because we do get a lot of speeders around that time too. Yeah. Um, and then after I mentioned that to him, I think maybe he got a little nervous because I kind of like you thought you were it. watching him. No, I'm just right. Right, right. <laughs> but I'm like right across the street, so I was just, you know, I was like, thanks, I feel a lot safer. And then th that area was not, you know, it was no longer. He would no longer came there. So what what, what I can tell you. Um, since this were and I did get your information, like I said, I did reach out. I know there is extra patrol over there where they're supposed to be patrolling doing certain certain times of night throughout the night, um, making um, checks. So I will do a follow up with that and um, I will give all my information out. And if you see anything, you can always call me. Oh, yeah, definitely. We, but we definitely. Yep. And yeah. always, always our non emergency number or our 911, but our non emergency number, you always can give us a call. Um, but I know there is special attention. And I don't want to go too much into detail. No, no, no. But this no, person don't. could be responsible for some other things that's happening that's going on. So I, I could tell you we are working. <laughs> so we then you're on here. top of it. Yeah, we have been doing crime crime analysis of it, so we could kind of pinpoint the times, what time is happening, what time we're getting, what days of the week we're getting it, so we kind of pinpoint it down. So we are working on it. Okay. So okay. I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad you did you you let me know of it because I'm not on the road. So normally what they do in the in the uh, beginning of shift we have what they call a red log, so they do read it off to officers so they know where to go and what to look out for. So we are looking at that. Okay. And I have one more question for Kim. About with the uh, with all thank the you, officer thank you, Officer Benson. With uh, with all the empty building, we notice like if you go to Royal Oak, you go to Firm Dale, like the, everybody's got new business coming in, and I noticed the business we got they're they've been empty since we moved here and bought into Oak Park for two years now, and uh, now there's more even going empty, and I see all the business they're opening up. Do we have and they're just sitting there, sitting there and basically decaying. I mean, do we have any options for small businesses going into the area where these where these have you know left? I know that one comment, um, one response was that there was someone that had retired, um, but there's also the old appliance store next to the daycare that's been vacant uh for quite a while as well. I mean, that could definitely be like a multi-purpose, that could even be like a nice uh, restaurant area, coffee shop, something. Um, and then I was also speaking to that because you have the linear park, but you have nothing to draw anyone to the area except for the residents that live there. And with all the parks that are being, you know, created and 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 formed, we need a space where, you know, I I go. There's a place in Rochester Hills that I take my son because it's just gorgeous, like the trail you know, I'm willing to drive out there. And I'm sure that they have their local, you know, they have their local population there too. But what will bring people to Oak Park when right across from the linear park, there's several abandoned, you know, storefronts that could be ice cream shops or maybe a major chain of some sort that would attract, you know, not only residents and people from outside the area, but would also attract business. You're, you're correct. Justine, I'm, you're, all you, you guys are really expressing exactly what we need. On the flip side, we've done a great job on 11 Mile by the water tower. That is genius. I mean- Oh yeah, it's, it's great. It's great there, yes. That is crazy. The Berkeley Coffee, the beer place, the, we need more of that on Nine Mile. Let's transfer some of that good look and exactly, down Ziggy. the Nine Mile, we'll be all set. You are right, Ziggy. And there's a lot of people asking it from, if you look at our uh, uh, our group, they, they they all want it on nine mile. Right. Let's, okay. let's uh, why don't uh, we let, yeah. why don't we let Kim uh, respond to all of this? 
<laughs> Thanks, Peter. So, and those are all good points. Um, so to kind of sum things up for you, um, it's not that we don't have a lack of interest in a lot of those buildings you, you referenced, for instance, the old appliance store. Um, I've had probably 15 people that would like to purchase it. Uh, the problem is based on the price they are selling it for and the amount of repairs that are needed in that building, it's unfeasible. Um, even with incentives that we've offered them to, in order to do that, it just, it, for their bottom line, they can't make a business plan to make it work. Um, that's not the only building on Nine Mile that has issues. Um, we do have a few projects that we're working on right now that I think you will like. Um, I can't announce those now, mm -hmm. um, but they are similar in fashion to what we do have going on 11 Mile. We are limited on Nine Mile in the fact that we don't have as much parking as 11 Mile Road does have. Um, we would like to, if, if possible, in the future, purchase some maybe houses that maybe go up for sale, create some additional parking that are near Nine Mile, adjacent to the commercial areas. None of those have come up for sale uh, for us to purchase, but we are keeping an eye on those. Um, but we don't want to displace anybody either. So unless somebody's willing to sell, we don't want to displace people to create a parking lot. Let's put it that way. Um, but we do have some exciting projects that we're working on right now that hopefully you will like coming to Nine Mile Road. Mm -hmm. um, and all the improvements that we've done so far has uh, helped spur the excitement in that area. The new apartment building will definitely go a long way in spurring additional investment. In fact, the owner of that property would like to do more. It's all about working with the property owners. Some of them don't want to sell. Some of them would prefer their buildings just be vacant. They don't have them for lease. They don't have them for sale. And um, they've had multiple offers on all of their buildings. Um, unfortunately, uh, we can't force somebody to sell, but we are doing our best to attract the businesses and we haven't seen a de decrease in the interest. We see a lot of, we see a lot of interest. It's, it's a lot of times but, just playing with the whole, our property owners. I take it that they're current on the taxes and property taxes. And, yes. businesses and I know they're not keeping up with blank. I mean, you keep a walk that they, most of them don't even shovel their uh, property. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you I'll give you an address for that because yeah, there's there's one right and I'm I'm not exactly I know more description than the street, but it's nine mile and it's there's a BP and there's like this big building there that's next to uh this catering plaza um that's right next to the pocket park. That I'll I'll be more specific in writing. But that's um okay, right. But they, I mean, I know that the city's coming out to cut the lawn for them. Yeah, yeah. they are not shoveling yeah, that, at all. Yeah, they don't take care of garbage all over on mm -hmm. it. And I think it's on Seneca Street. You're talking about the pocket park by Seneca Street? Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that building at the corner. Yeah, uh, she knows. Yes, you know, Cindy, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so when you have those issues, I mean, you can certainly send them to me and I'll forward them to our code enforcement if you see any light issues. Our code enforcement does a great job in working with people. Our main goal is to try and get people into compliance. So we try to work with people, give them the opportunity to actually come into compliance before we write tickets. Um, but of course, there's cases that we do have to go that far. Okay. Yeah, if you, have, you, any, if you no, have any further yeah, questions... That or issues that you're seeing, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to answer those okay. questions. We're, and we're not complaining. We we love Oak Park. I mean, it, it's beautiful for her. The mayor, Madam Mayor, is doing a very good job. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's even up to date generation. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have a great mayor. <laughs> she's coming down. She's going to get a surfboard for next year, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, there's your check is in the mail. <laughs> Woodland hey, Waters here. Can I jump in? Pardon? Woodland Pardon? Waters. Can I jump in? Yes. Oh, what okay. waters? Well, yes, waters. We're surrounded by waters. We got we got lakes, waters. We're we're, we're a hundred. Not in Oak Park. <laughs> Close enough. No. Anyway. Well, let me get to. Well, I'm always uh, really concerned about as I watch this. East Detroit, um, Detroit, East Oak Park become what it's becoming. Uh, uh, even taking our baseball field just on, I knew this was coming and I'm really fearful now that looking at these businesses, 
I'm hoping Nine Mile doesn't turn into a bar strip or possible marijuana establishments. Exactly. I want something to guarantee that it will stay family friendly. Well, you could have a kitty corner on one side and marijuana on the other. Well, I can tell you from a city perspective, we have um, not allowed any marijuana facilities within the community. So as of right now, that is not something that we allow. Okay, what about bars? I don't, I see these establishments holding on. And yeah. this is a thing I've been fearing for some time. I don't want that part. That's homes in there. I hate those pocket parts. I call the, the decoration Tinker Toys because I have, I raised, I've been living here for 45 years. I raised my kids and I've watched the green space disappear. It's frightening. So it will bring in unwanted things. So bars, marijuana things, and things of that caliber. If there's going to be a committee to stop it, call me because I don't, I couldn't deal with that after all these years. Oh, one thing I will say, pocket parts, ma'am, and stuff, it does stop a lot of riffraff coming in. It, it does. It, it, you get people uh, more kid-friendly moving into the neighborhood, which is good for all of us. <laughs> well, why didn't you help with keeping Jackson Park apart? We don't have any green space. I have granddaughters. I'm not going to let them play on, on Nine Mile. So what you're saying now is... I don't even know how to deal with it. If you didn't come out and try to keep our one little baseball field, and now you're going to go for oh this great pocket park, I don't, I don't see it. Um, hey Sherman, I had a couple of questions if I could ask. Go ahead. Okay, when you're done, um, I'd like to say. So, two of them are for Officer Benson, and one is for Kim Maroney. Um, for Officer Benson. Um, do you know when the next coffee with a cop is going to be scheduled and where? And then secondly, is the Citizens Academy going to ever come back? Okay, um, coffee with cops will, will be in April, the month of um, April. We haven't picked the location yet, but it's gonna. It will be out. Um, we have, we'll put it out like in um, in March. But it is going to come. I know a lot of people like them. I try to space them out a little bit because I don't want you to get bored with it or say, here's another coffee with cops. But we March, uh, we are going to have one the first part of March. And then we'll put it out, which um, March or April. We'll have it in. It's going to, uh, I'm sorry, in April. But okay. while it's going to be out on notice in March where we'll have it in. We'll put okay. out like a, a, like a, a month of head. What about the Citizens Academy? The Citizens Academy is coming back. Uh, me and Steve are working on that. We knew it was going to be in May. Um, that's the dates we picked so far in the month of May. So it is coming back this year. And um, we're going to change a few things up in it, with it, give it a new little flavor, but it's definitely coming back in May. Thank you. And it'll, be, it'll be on, I'm sorry, it'll be every um, Wednesday in May. Oh, great. The that's month good. of May. And I had a comment to uh, Kim. So I understand that the convent, the vacant convent at Oak Park Boulevard is due for demolition in the spring. Sorry, forgot to unmute myself. So um, we had a person that had purchased that property over four years ago, and they were going to put a nursing uh, assisted living facility on that property. And unfortunately, they have um, they don't have the money to actually do the construction because construction costs, as many of you know, uh, with everything in the economy, have gone through the roof. So they currently have that property for sale. I don't think demolition is part of the plan until we have a new project on board. We have several interested parties. Um, the purchase price is a little higher than what it should be, in my opinion. Um, but hopefully we can make something work out um, with the people who are interested. I see Dawn has her hand up. I've had my hand up for a while. Um, Lori Palmer asked a question in the chat bar. So I was going to mention that for her. Okay. I believe this question is um, for Officer Benson. Are the B&E's 
um, vandalism to businesses that are open or businesses that are closed? I believe that's how she meant that. Yeah, I think it's both. Um, some of the, the the units were like a doctor's office, and it was a couple other um, places, and some of them were were closed. I know, I know the one that was B and E was Hanson that's closed, um, but the other were open units. But like I say, what was strange was there was nothing taken. They were uh, just the window were um, broken out the um, locations. Can Can I add to that? This is Lori. I'm sorry. I'm. I'll, I'll put my video on so you can see me. Um, I don't attend all of these meetings, but I have uh, initially I started to when I first moved to Oak Park um, five years ago. I lived in Ferndale, not too far from where I live now. And it was night and day. <laughs> you know, it was like crossing over to another universe almost, which, which, and I, I knew that was true before I moved here because my kids went to Ferndale schools and they also went with, uh, they, you know, they had, Friends from Oak Park. And um, so um, I think Nine Mile needs a lot of attention. <laughs> I think the, the closed businesses are an invitation to, and, and, and visible, very visible, an, an invitation to um, decline. And, um, um, and I also, you know, I live very close to Nine Mile, and Nine Mile in Ferndale is vibrant. And I'd love to see that in. Oak Park as well, and I and we're just down the road. Um, and what I understand from <laughs> realtors is that people are going to move into Oak Park who can't afford to move into Ferndale, but it has to be an attractive place to live. Um, and you know, we haven't talked about this, and we won't today. But my one thing I noticed immediately was in the neighborhoods was an enormous amount of garbage on the streets, uh, in the yards. Um, places that are yards that are overgrown. <clears throat> and Kimberly, I did call, I've called on a couple of occasions and didn't get any real response to um, concerns that I have about neighbors. I hate to do that. I, I just hate to do that because um, in one case, I know the neighbors are immigrants or refugees from Somalia. And I, I really, you know, I just hate to, target them in any way, but um, their garbage blows down the street all week. And, you know, in the summer months, food rotting on the curb. And um, rather than ticket them, <laughs> how about educate them or support them in some way? Um, so yeah, I, uh, as a formal, a former Ferndale resident who loves to live in Oak Park, I also love Oak Park. Um, I, I think there's a lot of room for uh, attract, uh, doing things that could attract new families. <clears throat> I think Nine Mile would be one and a lot of attention to neighborhoods in this quadrant would be another. I couldn't speak to if that. I, if I, I'm, I'm sorry, can I oh, do go ahead, Kim. Is that okay if I just, I'm you sorry. Thank yeah, you, Ms. Good. Palmer. I, I think you make a lot of good valid points. I would suggest um, in regards to issues with your neighbors and the code enforcement, um, we do have a system, it's called GovQA, that you can access on our website, and you can um, put formal complaints in, and it is required by our staff that they respond to you um, so that you know what the follow-up is, and I think that's the best way to make sure that you're being heard, and then you know what the action was that we took. I can say don't feel bad to um, report anything. Our code enforcement staff are probably one of the best. We don't ticket people unless we have to. Our main goal is to get them into compliance. We work with them. We just ask them to, you know, this is what you need to do. And then you're fine. We give them many opportunities before any tickets are issued. So the goal is to get everybody into compliance. And our code enforcement staff are wonderful at doing that. They have great personalities and work with the community to do that. So. Unfortunately, we don't know what we don't know. So make sure that you go to GovQA on the website and I can provide that um, later, a link to it for anybody who wants to uh, access that. I really appreciate that. I, I did call and I don't know if I called the right number. I just saw Ziggy put the code, whatever that is, phone number. Yeah, um, so that, that's a phone number. I would suggest doing the GovQA, which is an online method. 
because then that way they have your email and everything that they can actually respond to the actual action that's taken place on it. So another thought I had about that is rather than single out individuals is doing something um, citywide to promote neighborhood pride and um, as a whole, just try to build up communities and neighborhood communities. We, I have a lot of um, renters on my street. I live on Seneca, just, um, let's see, <laughs> north of Nine Mile. And um, I love my neighborhood and I love the diversity and I love having Somalia refugees down the street from me. But um, but I think we could do more and I, I don't have an answer to what that would be, but to, um, to be more community and neighbor oriented to try to really help each other accomplish some of these goals. Kim, I'm uh, looking at the city website and uh, for code enforcement and I can't find, I, I couldn't even get exactly, you said GovQA? Yeah, I believe it's on our main page of the website. I'll put it in the chat link um, real quick here. Let me okay. find it. And it, is on the, it, is, it is on the main page on the left-hand side as you scroll down. It's on the cover page of yeah. the, the home page of the website on the left-hand side as you scroll down. Yes. Oh, and, I see it. I got it. Yeah. Anyways, I'd like to... Like that to would might be good if that was on the code enforcement page. So I, I just want to respond to somebody said something about the cleanup days. Well, the last one was on the service drive of 96 that I'm aware of. And yeah. it didn't include Nine Mile. It didn't include the alleys where all the garbage accumulates. It didn't include my neighborhood. And so if it included my neighborhood, I'd be glad to participate. But um, I'm not that part of Oak Park, of course, is of concern to me, but not as much concern as my neighborhood. OK, and can I? Yeah. Lori, let me let me jump on that for a minute. Um, I'm pretty popular with those kind of things. I love to clean up. I'm Mr. Garbage Man. So if you let one of our, oh, sorry. Zig, you're muted. <laughs> Anyways, Lori, I'm Mr. Garbage Man. I'm the Grover of Sesame Street. Why don't you get a hold of one of us guys and they'll let me know where we're going next. In the summer, I've had up to 12 people from all over the neighborhoods, especially people running for office. Everybody comes sometimes. And we've done Nine Mile before. We've done it. And you know what? We would love to do that Somalia house or whatever the company, whoever it is, doesn't even matter. And just to show by example, and that's that's my motto right here. Show by example. We'll I'd like to know, give me an address, give us a place, and I'll look for volunteers. One of my favorite garbage helpers, I think you're online here, aren't you, uh, Karen? Yeah, she's online. All they gotta do is tell her we're doing the job, she's on it, so. So thank you, but what I want, and I'll, I'll stop after this, but what, what I wanted to say is, um, I'm not so much in, in, interested in um, cleanup crews by pretty much white people. <laughs> I'm interested in, um, building community pride and, and trying to um, do something that brings the diversity of our population together and um, creates maybe more of a, um, a community-based um, effort to come together as a whole. So not that I don't appreciate that, but I don't think it's really going to address what I'm concerned about. Well, we do have our summer parties just for that reason. Go ahead, Kimberly. Sorry. Go ahead. Just so you know, Lori, what I will do is I will bring your suggestion to our city manager and maybe it's something that we can do a city article in the magazine, um, just talking about community pride and what you can do on your own property and within the community to make things better for everyone. Well, Let I me say, that. I've still been, I'm sorry, Lori, go ahead. I appreciate that. I, I am not interested in judging other people. I'm interested in coming together as a community to raise our um, community spirit about um, pride, not just pride, but love for where we live and taking care of each other as neighbors. You know, she's right about that too. She's very right because like you drive down Nine Mile going to, into Oak Park from Ferndale, so it is a night and day and I mean, this Oak Park alone on Nine Mile, you got so many potential. The potential here is really unbelievable. It could be one beautiful street. 
It could be. She's it, right. It could be that, you know, uh, Miss Maroney, like you were saying, you know, you try to give every opportunity for for not having to do the ticketing. Um, but I know that, you know, maybe with doing that they're you know, you're getting pushback because they know that they have more opportunity to wait and to wait and to wait. Like I have a couple of friends that, you know, we had a birthday party for my son and she was late going to get her registration because she knows Oak Park and she knows that she was going to get pulled over by the police if she was stopped and didn't have her tags right. So, you know, she specifically made sure to get her registration and was like two hours late to the party because in her mindset, Oak Park doesn't play when it comes to, you know, you having expired tags. In the same way that that businesses and residents should know that, okay, we'll give you an opportunity to, you know, correct the situation for blight or whatever, but it's not going to be, you're going to have 90 days, then you'll have another 30 days, then you'll have another, you know, in that instance where they know that there's time to just basically fluff around and not, and not get it done. Yeah. Basically you got to be like the Oak Park police. They don't play. <laughs> They'll give you a ticket in a second. Could we, uh, I think, uh, I think our, I think our mayor wanted to yeah, we got uh, make, yeah. make a remark. Um, I wanted to uh, tell Lori that when I was a young mom, the only reason anybody went into Ferndale was to buy discount drugs at F and M because there wasn't another thing that anybody would come and see, and it wasn't you know the booming place it is right now. But they started economic development. They started improving Nine Mile, and they changed it from pretty much a dead strip into what you see today. And probably five years ago, we started doing that in Oak Park. And it is a 20 year project. So we're in maybe year six of a 20 year project and we have done uh, amazing things uh, that, that weren't here 10 years ago. Yeah. And um, it's hard to wait because I want it to come Tuesday also. And I support you 100% in bringing everybody together. Uh, you might want to start a block club on your block. That is an option. There is a how to do it um, manual that the police department has um, exactly how to start a block club. Um, and you start by uh, putting out invitations to all the neighbors and have them for coffee and cookies and talk about what are the issues that are bothering you the most. Get to know your neighbors. So that might be something you are interested in. Um, you can talk to Officer Benson or talk to me. I'd uh, be lovely to, delighted to help you with it. Um, and uh, keep on keeping on. We're glad you're in Oak Park. I appreciate that very much. Um, I lived in Ferndale for a few decades. And um, so I know there was this transition period. And I also grew up um, in Clawson. And when I was growing up in Clawson, Ferndale had adult, you know, <laughs> Uh, stores for all kinds of things and, and, and things that were unsavory and it wasn't what it is today. It was a transition and a process. So I, I love to see what's happening in Oak Park. I guess I'm just trying to offer some thoughts on attracting people to Oak Park and I'm glad that it's moving in that direction. So thank you. Could, could I just say as a little sidebar, I've been while well, listening to everybody, I've been trying to navigate the Oak Park uh, website and I'm pretty uh, savvy. It's a navigational nightmare. I mean, mm. it, it it is not, it really needs to be redesigned and it's not really, I mean, in order to, you know, to this gov QA, you have to keep scrolling down, scrolling down, scrolling down. And that that's not good design. So I don't know if this is the you know, um, you know, if, if I if I wanted to make a code enforcement complaint, my sense would be to go to the code enforcement uh, tab, which I don't see at the top here. Now I'm lost again in it. It 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 really needs uh, badly needs a redo. It'd be worth uh, spending whatever it takes to to do it to be because I think that would improve uh, community um, services uh, considerably. 
Yeah, I can comment on that. We are actually working on that. We've been working on it for several months now. Uh, we hope to have a complete redo of our website. Hmm. Um, so hopefully it'll be um, a much better, more. She's. She's been in and out of service. I've had to admit her a couple times. So she might be just getting a bad signal. There's a snowstorm in her area. There's a snowstorm in our area. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Oak Park. It's going on <laughs> everywhere. But yeah, she's been um, unable to stay online. Sorry. Let's focus back on. I'm going to okay. leave my video off because it makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Did you hear what I said or do you want me to repeat it? You can repeat, you froze. Okay, my apologies. Um, we are working currently on redoing the website because you're absolutely right, Peter. It is not very intuitive and hopefully we'll be able to launch that within the next several months. Um, something that our communications department has been working very hard on. Um, so you're absolutely correct and we are working on it. Terrific. <laughs> I think we're about to wrap it up, guys. What any any urgent? Uh, is there anything anybody else in the in the audience who would like to make a quick comment here? I see uh, about eight people here that haven't said anything. Anybody? I just yeah. wanna, I just want to offer um, to Lori Palmer an idea that if she were to start up a block club that we work in tandem with one another, we create a day Certainly. where all of our neighbors are involved in cleaning up the neighborhood and no matter what color they are, um, I feel very uh, fortunate to have Ziggy on board because he has, in, he has brought it all out. He's brought everybody out to do the work. It's hard to find people to do that kind of work. Not everybody has time or energy and so I think no matter who's out picking up trash, it's valuable. And if you want us to spend some time on your street, please let us know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to turn anyone away, no matter what, what no. background they have. So no. if that's something that you'd like to coordinate with us. Please reach out. We'd be happy to work with you and make this a community uh, aspect and job because Unfortunately, trash is a constant nuisance, unfortunately, for our neighborhood too. So. Yeah, well, thank you. I appreciate that. And I will reach out. Thank you. You're welcome. I had one last question about, to the Officer Benson, if I may, about the police presence at, at the Oak Park High School. Yes. Um, so I did receive the question, reference the, is that the one with the basketball game? Is that the yes. question? Yes. So, just to, so, so just to so just to let you know, um, since I've been here 25, 26 years, we have never had an incident like that at, at the high school and even at the basketball game. Um, like you know, the people, the the students that were uh taking part in that was not actually O Park students. They were from different school districts um that was up there. And we did re respond and take the those um, individuals into custody and they are being prosecuted now. Also, just to let you know, since that we have worked with the security um, director over there and what I can tell you, there is a police presence over there. There, We're actually doing what you call walkthroughs through the game, throughout the game. We're gonna have people in the parking lot. Um, so you're gonna see a lot of presence over there. We have their schedule on what's going on. So I think it was just, uh, it was an incident, isolated incident that took place doing that. Um, so I know the security over at the school have changed different protocols also. So just to let you know, um, like I said, I've been here over 20 years and we have never had anything like that. Uh, we responded, uh, we did take them in custody and they were not students of Oak Park, just to let you know, if that make you feel a little bit better. Yes. So we are, so you will definitely see the next game is coming up next Friday, and we have a couple games after that. So you will see more presence over there as police officers. That's all Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So in conclusion, I would like to make a personal suggestion. Uh, police, maybe we should have form a pocket of money and police can hand out $5 visa gifts. You stop somebody and say, sir, 
you know you're speeding. I'm just warning you. Here's a five dollars. We don't want to get you mad or anything, but do something. You know, something in that terms. So, we so don't just even to, want to give out tickets. So, so just to let you know, we have done that in the past uh, with some donations from different people. Um, we have stopped people, and some people donated some different uh, gift cards and different things. So we just don't write tickets. Um, we do advise people, and sometimes, like I like to say, sometimes you have to educate a lot of people on some things because yeah. some people don't know. You know, we take for granted that everyone have um, everyone have driver's license, or they are uh, they going through driver's ed. But a lot of people out here now are just driving. But let you know, we do write tickets, but we do advise people, and and we and that's a good gesture because we have seen it on the news. But I can say we have given out different gift cards. Um, and, throughout Oak Park. And even uh, code enforcement, the guy knocks on your door and says, you got to get him mad. I don't want to get him mad, sir. I'm going to give you a $5 gift certificate today. But I'm also letting you know, you know, you need to plow the snow, pick up the garbage, whatever, just so it's a learning experience, not a bitter, bitter, terrible. This is something, it's one of my wish list things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I Honestly, Zig, it sounds like people then would, would not mow their lawn or would speed, right? So they can get a $5 gift certificate. No, so you're incentivizing it. That's that. what I was just thinking too, Zig. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Oh, let me get a ticket to pull over so I get uh, $5. <laughs> I mean, I mean, honestly, if, if I cannot mow my lawn for two months and then have a code enforcement say, hey, you know what, let's mow the lawn for you this time, I'm all for that. So you're incentivizing things. <laughs> okay. Some people deserve a ticket too, actually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Go ahead, Madam Mayor, go ahead. Okay, so um, uh, I see some new people that I don't think have gotten my cell phone yet. So I put it in the um, in the chat. Everybody in Oak Park has my cell phone number. If you have a pencil right now, you can take it down. It is 248-217-1883. That's Lori and Don and, and Justine. I don't think you have it. 248 217-1883. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, we appreciate 24, it. 24 7. If you have a question or you don't know who to contact, always you can contact me. I am available. Thank you very kind. Yeah, we took we took we talked to you all um when you had that thing going on the nine state miles. Of the city address. I was the one with the person that was looking in our window. We called the police and <laughs> they were there right that and yeah, that was us. Oh. Okay, Miss Sylvia has her hand up. Where are you, Sylvia? I'm here. Oh, uh, I have ahead. a question, question for Officer Benson. Um, I know the library is still closed. Is it going to be still closed between the hours of three and four every day on a school day? So right now, um, unless something changed in the last couple of days, it is um, being oh. closed. Um, I can tell you this, we have been open in our lobby because we all know we have some kids have to wait for their parents or someone to come pick them up. So we have been letting them come into our lobby to sit and stay warm. And like I say, a lot of times we just go out and let them know this is a place of business and how to conduct yourself. And, um, you know, we go out and talk to them, especially me. I go out and talk to the kids and see what's the latest trends, see what's going on. And, and just to let you know, reiterate on that, uh, shooting that took place. I mean, the young kids I have been talking to, they were very upset about it. Um, they didn't think it was something that gave them a bad light, but they were upset about it and um, they were pretty mad about it. And just to let you know, library is closed. Um, I did talk to some of the um, um, teachers and some of the people. I know they got a new annex over at the school for the kids. So we're going to try to get that back open also so they can have a place to go because um, it seemed like right now they don't have a lot of options. So uh, we are working with that on our end. Sam, you've got a question for us? Yeah, I'd like to switch back to Kimberly, if I may. Go ahead. Uh, you had mentioned in uh, when you were talking about Nine Mile Road that you were offering incentives to uh, get businesses to move in. You had mentioned that you were looking at uh, housing behind the businesses, uh, perhaps to develop parking. So what tools do you have in your toolbox 
to incentivize, to attract both residential and commercial uh, uh, interest in our city? Yeah, so that's a good question, Sam. So without going into great detail, there's tax incentives that can be offered to uh, potential developments. Um, there's also our facade improvement and program for everybody who is in our corridor improvement authority that incentivizes them to do improvements to their business facade. Um, I don't want to get long and drawn out on the actual incentives, but there's anything from brownfield to commercial re rehab to neighborhood enterprise zone to obsolete property rehabilitation act, which um, get pretty detailed. But I, I can I can elaborate if anybody wants to call me on I guess the offside because it's it's pretty detailed. In in terms of the the housing behind that would create parking. Uh, I, I noticed in the master plan that uh, uh, there was a suggestion that for those businesses to succeed, we would need to push into the residential areas to create behind the uh, store parking, much as in other neighborhoods. Uh, is, is there an existing fund that, would, that exists that would work towards, I mean, I would think that would take decades to uh, uh, to purchase properties. And then once you have amassed enough, you could then uh, uh, create parking behind a particular place. Is there an existing fund for that? So there is not an existing fund. Um, however, you can get creative in using general fund dollars, but justify it over the long term by the additional tax revenue that you're going to get by putting the businesses into the existing location. So um, it's it's quite complicated, but it can be done. Um, and obviously, you have to look at the purchase price of those properties and the cost to develop them into municipal parking. It could mean charging for parking, which um, is something that we, we have tried to um, not institute in charging for parking. Um, you hear a lot of complaints in many communities, um, especially Royal Oak with their new system that um, people don't like to pay for the parking. So as long as we can do it, we're not gonna charge for parking, but that might be something that we have to do in the future to subsidize doing those projects. And, and the other thing too, what Sam brought up too, you know, I, I agree with Sam 100%. He's right about that. And a lot of times these businesses, they're willing to pay for if, you know, make the park or bring it out more. If you guys would change the codes in it, on it, where they are allowed to do it, instead of waiting for the city to do it, because he's right, it'll take decades to get something like that done. Yeah, so we wouldn't prevent anybody from doing it. Are um, you advertising all this too somehow on tax senate and... Yeah, the tax incentives are all advertised on our website. Um, the issue that we don't want to go into is to have to displace people who live in those homes. Um, we don't think that that's the right approach. Um, for instance, if you lived in that home, you probably won't want to be approached by the city and say, hey, you have to move um, to create a parking lot. So I'm sorry, we're, we're looking at them and if any became available to purchase, for instance, our connector park from the linear park on nine mile, if you notice the vacant lot there, it was available for sale and the city purchased it so we could kind of create that connector park. So we're keeping an yes. eye on all those properties. And if any were to become available for sale, we would certainly look to purchase them. Like a lot of these businesses that are out there, they're empty. A lot of them got either parking in, in the back that are empty, the, like the worst place you were saying about, that's empty in the front. Or maybe you could talk to the uh, owner there and ask them to lower the price or something, because or something. Or maybe some cut some type of deal, you, you know, maybe the city put, put a little bit in just to sell that property, because you get it back in taxes at the end. Yeah, no, you're right. It, it is. It's a very I know what I'm talking about there because I'm really an expert in, in creating businesses. Yeah, so um, it, there's a lot of things that you need to consider. Again, displacing people and people. But who it doesn't. It won't displace nobody. 
By and doing it that way, it will not displace anybody. Everybody can stay where they're at. I'm sorry, Don. Maybe I didn't understand you. Could you repeat that then? Like the worst, uh, the worst place for that, uh, like the worst place. Like he's asking too high for the property. Oh, the old Italian store. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. You, know, you know, maybe somehow you could get the city get involved, and maybe if they could drop twenty thousand, talk to the owners, or maybe drop the twenty thousand or or something, or. Maybe the city could offer a little bit towards the property and somebody else buy it because you would get it. It's called creative way of buying where you guys will get it back at the end in taxes anyway. Yeah, and I understand what you're saying. The unfortunate situation is with taxpayer dollars, we can only spend it on certain items. Um, we can offer an incentive for somebody to go in there and, and do the investment, um, but the current owner... Um, we we can't put taxpayer dollars towards incentive. No, I'm not saying taxpayer dollars. I know but there's other ways you can that's do That's all of our funding source, unfortunately, which we have to work with. <laughs> right, if you I'm have another idea, let's talk offline. Yeah, okay. I, 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 I see what you're saying. I do have a couple ideas. We will write you. All right. Anyways, uh, we're always looking for volunteers. Let us know who's ready for my next crew. Uh, raise your hand so I know right now. Anybody raising their hand there? Okay, Don and Kristen, thank you. I know who to get a hold of. Well, how are you, Ziggy? Looks like Lori Palmer's on the list. Okay. What, Ziggy? Karen who? is raising her hand. Oh, I, I, I actually oh, have my hand raised to, to yeah, ask Karen. Kimberly a follow up question. Oh, Karen, go ahead. I thought you were raising your hand. Oh, you're my, you're, she's my <laughs> garbage assistant anyway. Go ahead, Karen. Yeah. What are you, so, so Kimberly, this question is for you um, regarding the the owners that um, either don't want to sell their properties or are asking way too much. Are is the city at least forcing them to keep their their buildings code compliant so they're not falling apart and becoming eyesores? Yeah, that's a great question. Absolutely, we definitely um, look at those businesses and any business. Um, and if they're not following code, uh, code zoning ordinances, we definitely work with them and try to make them get into compliance. Um, a lot of times we'll have people that are leasing their business interested. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of tools to force them into anything. Uh, we do our best to try and let's just say pressure them to maybe uh, do the right thing for the community, but we can't force anything. I hope that answers your question. It did. Thank you. Okay. I think we've said it all. Is everybody ready to go home? Mm -hmm. Oh, you are home. <laughs> or how about to the bar? <laughs> do oh. I hear Bar. One thing, uh, do not go out tonight. It is uh, wind chills. Dangerous wind chills, minus 15 below. Oh, okay. All stay right. Stay home. I'm going home. I'm staying home. <laughs> All right. I was going to tell my wife I'm forced to go to another meeting at the bar, but I guess I can't do that. <laughs> All right. Catch you guys next time. Be well. Stay well. Uh, if if uh, if anything I can do, you can do. So you got a big leeway. <laughs> Thanks for coming yes. to the meeting, guys. Nice seeing yeah, everybody. Yeah, thank you guys so thank much. You. Thank good you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Bye bye. Care, everyone. Have a good week. Don, can right. you make sure you capture the chat and stop the recording?